Uh, welcome to this presentation where I will be talking about AI forecasting or predictive forecasting in Paw. So let me go ahead and share my screen. There you go. So our agenda for today is I'm going to talk about what is AI forecasting in Paw and what was the need for this particular feature to be added into uh, planning analytics. Uh, I will also talk about the steps and things to take into consideration for the setup of our AI forecast. Next, I will show you a demo on how we can achieve this feature and where uh, I'll be also going over each of the steps. And uh, finally, we will end the presentation with uh, any questions that uh, you may have. So what is AI forecasting? So before we move on to that question, let's take a step back and uh, uh, understand like why was there a need to add this feature? So many organizations, uh, large and small, they still rely on manual processes uh, using spreadsheets for budgeting and forecasting. So if you do that manually, the entire process can take days or weeks and even months in some cases. Now to help such organizations, IBM, they released this uh, predictive forecasting or AI forecasting capability, which allows uh, users to generate forecasts based on uh, the historical data within the cube. So this feature is uh, especially useful to pre-populate a data set. So it can be uh, for you or for your team, and then you can adjust it, uh, the data set as you see fit. So configuring the forecast settings uh, doesn't take a lot of time. It only takes like a couple of minutes, but the results that it generates, it can be very powerful. So this feature was uh, released uh, with the power version 2.0.58. So if you are below that version, I would suggest you to upgrade it to use this amazing feature uh, amongst many others. So uh, let's talk about AI forecasting. So what it does is it helps in discovering model trend and seasonality based on time-dependent data. Uh, it involves uh, using a series of algorithms to run the data, and then it figures out uh, the best fit in terms of highest accuracy and uh, the least errors in predicting a future value. So you do not actually need uh, to have um, any experience with time series forecasting in order to use this feature. Since it is uh, powered by AI, it is automatically calculated for you. Uh, but one thing to note here is that it may not be as accurate. Uh, so let's move on to uh, the forecast setup tab. So uh, the forecasting algorithm, as I said, it discovers uh, model seasonality, uh, trends, and um, time dependence in data. Uh, the forecast is displayed uh, as a continuation of historical data uh, with highlighted confidence intervals, which we will see that in a couple of minutes. Now, because this is uh, time-based, uh, this feature requires that a time dimension has to be set up in a specific way. So the first thing that we need to take care of is to ensure uh, that the cube uh, where you want uh, the forecast, it includes a time dimension. So you can have uh, one or more time dimension that can be used to forecast against. Here, uh, you can have a year dimension. That is, if you have that in your model, you can stack that before this time dimension. You just have to make sure that it should be contiguous. Uh, the next thing that needs to be taken care of is that uh, they must all appear on the column of the exploratory view. So again, like I said, uh, the leaves must result in a contiguous evenly spaced periods of time. So if you have an uneven hierarchy that is, which is uh, non-contiguous in nature, like this, where you have like 2017, followed by another consolidation of a quarter and then leaf level elements, and then another consolidation, which is a quarter. So this will not work in this scenario. What we, uh, you can do over here is you can correct it to create uh, a hierarchy or a set that includes only the leaf level months, which is Jan, Feb, March. So I already have created those uh, beneath um, over here. I have a subset called forecasting months, which have all the leaf level elements. Uh, the next thing that we need to uh, take care of uh, is to have quality and good amount of historical data. So there are certain requirements on how our data should be. Uh, number one is that the historical data must represent uh, at least double of what is being forecast. So for example, if the data has two years of 
uh, data, then anything forecasted beyond one year uh, can be or must be disregarded. Secondly, the historical data must represent at least two seasons of data if it has seasonality. So for example, uh, if the data cycles yearly and the leaf members are at a month level of granularity, that it must at least have 24 months of data in the history. So this way the feature can automatically detect the cycle. So what I'm trying to say is uh, the more data you have, the better your forecast would be. Now let's move on to uh, the demo and see how uh, we can achieve this. So here I am working on the Maverick model, which is a demo model. Uh, and I have a view set up of the finance cube with the measures on the rows and uh, the time dimension elements uh, on columns. Now, because this is uh, time-based forecasting, like I said, it is important to have uh, the time dimension set up correctly. The finance cube has a time dimension, as we see, and I have the month set up, uh, um, uh, the leaf level month set up in columns. Now, we, now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to select the element that we need to forecast. So you can forecast multiple elements, but for this demo, I will only forecast revenue. So I'm just gonna go ahead, select revenue, and just keep that um, in, in my rows. So our view is all set up now. Uh, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and click on this forecast icon at the top. So you need to click on the view first and then click on the forecast button uh, to show uh, the forecast settings. So here we have uh, two tabs, which is the setup tab and the advanced tab. First, let's go um, through the setup tab. So the first thing that we need to do here is select our forecast period start and end months. So I'm gonna go ahead and select our forecast start month to Jan 2022. And uh, my forecast period end month is uh, December 2022. So that is, we will be forecasting it for one year. So the forecast, uh, the period start and the end drop down, uh, this list will populate based on the elements that you have in your view. So make sure if you, if you don't have uh, your time dimension set up correctly, this list will, will, will not populate. Uh, well, now we see that we have a checkbox over here. So this checkbox, if you, when you check it, uh, will save important statistical information like uh, accuracy, seasonality, trend, confidence in a will, uh, in the comments in the data cell, uh, in the data cells. So if you do not want to see that information, you can just uncheck the box. Now let us check uh, the advanced tab. So the first thing that we see here is the seasonality button. So we have an option to select or deselect this. I want to take seasonality in account for my forecast, hence I will leave this on. Uh, the next option is to select the scope of the data. So you can either have, uh, you can either use the historical data in the cube, or you can use uh, historical data in the exploration. So like uh, I have all my months that I need in the in my exploration. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the second option. If you do not have it already set it up like this, you can just use, use historical data in cube. Now, uh, we also have an option to, uh, uh, sorry, so yeah, so we, we, we have an option to choose a confidence in a will. So by default, this is set up to 95, 95%, but you can select it either to be 90 or 99 based on your needs. I'm gonna keep it at 95% for this demo. Now, the next thing is you have an option to ignore a particular time period. So for example, if you want to exclude an outlier or two, uh, that is a couple of months that you do not want your forecast to take into account, you can specify that over here. You can say, okay, um, maybe you see that, okay, June 21, you think that is an outlier, you can just specify that over here. For this demo, I'm just gonna keep it blank. And uh, then finally, we have uh, the options to where we want to save the predictions. So we can save it anywhere we want to, uh, that is any way the options are given. I'm going to go ahead and select the version dimension over here, and I'm going to go ahead and select the version hierarchy. Now, for this demo purposes, I created a new element in the version dimension called AI forecast, where I want the predictions to be stored. So in the select member to save prediction dropdown, I'm going to go ahead and select that version. And you also have an option to select the upper bound and the lower bound values. So for that, uh, for upper bound, I created a new version. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. 
And similarly for lower bound, I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, the air for gas lower. Okay, so uh, before we, now that we have uh, our uh, uh, settings all set up, what we need to do is uh, before we run the forecast, we have an option to preview it. So the way we do that is we need to highlight one of the rows and click on preview. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on revenue and click on preview. So here we have uh, two tabs that provide, uh, provides us information. Uh, let's look at the preview chart first. So the preview chart will display uh, the forecasted data along with uh, this shaded area, which is the confidence range. So which this, this shaded area denotes that there is a 95% chance that the values will be in this range because we selected uh, our confidence interval to be 95%. Here at the top, uh, we see that we have a high predictive accuracy. That means that we can be sure uh, that our values would actually lie in this range. Coming to statistical details, uh, this tab shows us more in-depth details about a lot of measures that uh, are used by the model to perform the forecast. You can see the AIC values, the MAPE, RMSE. We can also see that, okay, the model selected is uh, exponential smoothing model. Uh, the trend is additive. So this tab will give you a lot of uh, extra details about your forecast. So the last step is to uh, run the forecast. So in order to do this, um, I have my row selected as revenue. I'm gonna go ahead and click on forecast. So this will run the forecast taking oh, all sorry, the Sorry, before, before you make that magic happen, just wanna give you a heads up that we're about at half time. So just, just keeping right. you on this there. Uh, thanks, Adam. Yeah. Uh, so, the, so when I clicked on the forecast button, it, um, it's gonna run the forecast, taking all the options we selected into consideration. And uh, now what I wanna do is, uh, since I selected uh, the new version that I created, the values will populate there. I'm just gonna replace that, my measure with uh, uh, the version dimension. And here you can see uh, we've specified that uh, starting Jan 2022, uh, forecasted values should appear. Here we have those values. We, you see that there is a blue dot uh, uh, on, on, the, on this particular data set. So remember we saved, um, uh, we wanted to save the statistical information. So this, this particular data cell will save that information. In order to view that, you can just go ahead and click on comments and you can see all the statistical summary which, where it will tell you about the accuracy, the seasonality, the trend and uh, other important details that you may wanna look at. Now beneath uh, the view, we have a chart. So, uh, so this chart will give uh, with, this chart gives us uh, the graphical information on our forecasted values. Uh, the dark pink line over here is our actuals. Our manual forecast is uh, the gray line, which seems to be very high. Seems like it was uh, entered by some overachiever or some over enthusiastic sales guy. And uh, the light pink. Uh, line is our AI uh, predictive forecast, which looks very much like our actuals and looks pretty believable and prom promising. So to summarize, uh, the AI forecast is a great tool uh, to generate um, a basic forecast for your model. Uh, it can improve particularly three aspects of forecast. Uh, number one is accuracy. So it can greatly improve forecast accuracy uh, by accessing trends and seasonality patterns in the historical values. Second is consistency. It helps produce dependable forecast values uh, using consistent algorithms across different business areas. And the third is timeliness. So it can help reduce the time required to produce an accurate forecast, thus uh, you know, allowing you guys and other users who may wanna use this feature to focus on process optimization. So uh, yeah, this is it, everyone. Uh, this was AI forecasting in PAW at Horizon 2021. Happy to share my knowledge with everybody. Uh, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. And um, you can also email me your questions if you have any. And uh, yeah, thank you. If you have any uh, questions. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> we have a couple coming through here. Um... Some that, uh, so there was one that was, that I had sort of answered in the chat um, regarding whether this was available in Architect. 
don't know if you want to speak to that a little bit, Vedant. I mean, I did yeah. sort of answer it there, but. Yeah, so currently this feature is uh, only available on PA. Uh, we cannot do that in architect or perspectives as it, uh, like it needs an advanced engine, which is only available in PA uh, uh, starting uh, version 2.0.58. Uh, because it has that what, what's an AI feature, which we do not currently have in perspectives. So yeah, to answer that question, we can only do that in fall as of now. Yeah, yeah, and that's, you know, this is sort of a, a new feature, right? And that's right. You know, we're moving towards using using planning analytics workspace over, over architect. Um, we, and we got a couple of interesting comments here too. I wanna call out um, a, a smart comment that was written by Max Parsons here that says you can also use the REST API to pull data from TM1 and then use other predictive tools like R or TM1 Pi. Um, I should, you know, give a, a shout out to, um, you know, one of our wow. colleagues, Mohammed, who actually developed the, the TM1 R library. Mm -hmm. So for R folks that are interested in using that, um, you can go ahead and, you know, cran that or, you know, Google it. You get the, the whole TM1 R library, just like we have TM1 Pi. Um, another question for you, Vedant, that came from uh, David here was, can this be scheduled to be run? Uh, currently, we do not have that uh, capability to do that yet in PAW, but I, I think I'm confident that maybe in the near, uh, the, the subsequent version, the future versions, we, we will get that feature soon. Yeah, yeah. It's not a CI process right now, right? Yeah. It's sort of a manual thing here, so there's no way yeah. to make a chore currently, but uh, right. definitely okay. something to, to consider putting on a request, I guess. Um,